welcome back to another episode of Kotlin Bytes. In this episode, I will introduce annotation processing by showing a use case that I created for the purpose of reducing pesky on-the-fly constants. Over the past year, I've been exploring this concept of annotation processing. In a nutshell, annotation processing is a technique used to generate code during compile time based on annotations that are specified throughout your code. Common use cases of annotation processing include automatically generating repetitive code and validation of code. I created a library called constant K that generates constants on the fly. I'll show you an example of the problem that this library attempts to mitigate. For this example, here is a sample dialog fragment that I'm using. This is a use case for Android. However, the library works for pure Kotlin as well. If you're an Android developer, you are well aware that string keys are used to pass arguments to a created fragment. Typically, these string keys are turned into string constants, like I have here. It's also common to create a factory method to create an instance of this fragment with the required arguments clearly defined. My goal is to eliminate these constants here. The first step is to add the named constant annotation to all the parameters that are going to need constants. Then build or make the project. This step is critical because it allows the annotation processor to generate the correct files. Then finally import and use the newly defined constants. You will notice that the annotation processor generated this file. Each class or object with the named constant annotation will have its own file containing all constants defined within its scope. The annotation also allows you to define custom names for the constant. This would be important for database key constants that might change as your parameter name might change in the future. Notice how the constant name updates as well. In my next video, I'll dive deeper into the basics of annotation processing as to lay the foundation for those that are interested in the topic. Here's the GitHub repo for this project. It explains how to set up the library within a Gradle environment and a few very simple use cases. Please contribute or message me with new ways to improve this library if you have any ideas. I'll leave a link to this repo in the description below. If you guys like these types of videos, make sure to leave a thumbs up. But if you really hated it, I guess the other button works as well. Either way, thanks for watching. Have a great day.